Hello RPA champions and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you something that you have asked me to do a lot. Show you how to post to multiple Facebook groups, put some text inside of the post and an image and repeat the same post on multiple Facebook groups. Let me show you exactly what I mean. We're going to be using Microsoft Power Automate desktop for anybody that is new to my channel. I create automations that are going to allow you to save countless hours of time and allow you to go play with your dog while your computer runs your tasks. In this example right here, we're going to be posting this post to multiple Facebook groups. We're going to be building this without the need of knowing how to code. We're just going to be needing how to know how to use Microsoft Power Automate Desktop, which is a no code, low code technology from Microsoft. A thing to mention is that this tool is becoming really, really easy to use and that everybody can do this automation. Now, in this automation, we have scraped all of the LinkedIn groups that I'm a member of. Now we are searching for a link. We are going to be writing something like we have seen the post that we have entered inside of the initial input menu and we're also going to be leaving a link to this post and then we're going to be posting this post and we're going to repeat this for all of the groups that are available excellent right let's get right into this and see how we can build this automation ourselves and manage to save countless hours of time now also if you need help building this automation don't hesitate to plan a short meeting with me or send me an email i can help you out also if you're looking for the code you're going to be finding the code down in the description below let's jump into microsoft power automate desktop and see how to build this automation ourselves this automation has only 21 steps these steps start with the user getting a pop-up window like we have seen before that is going to ask for two things the description of the post that you want to post and also the url that you want to post now what i have added here is a display custom form now you can find this action together with any other action all the way on the left side of your window where you're going to find all of different interactions that microsoft power automate desktop can do to interact with the browser with the windows applications start processes and so on and so on so all of the actions are going to be here and you're going to find this display custom form now you're going to drag and drop this and once you drag and drop it you're going to get this pop-up automatically two variables are going to be created the button pressed and the custom form data the custom form data variable meaning a container it is going to hold all of the information that you're going to be putting inside of the custom form designer if we click on the custom form designer we have the ability to build whatever kind of input form that we want for our user now we can just drag and drop different things that we need inside of our form in this example right here we have some initial text we have a description that we're going to post inside of the post the text description we're going to have a field to upload the picture and a button to submit now each one of these has an id and a label to distinguish it an id to use it inside of microsoft power automate desktop we're going to see that a little bit later now once we are done setting up our form we can also preview our form and see how it is going to look like and once we're done setting all of the different configuration we can click on done save and move on to the next action so in my process right here i am going to the facebook groups page where i have a list of all of the different groups that i am a member of I'm going to scroll down on that page with JavaScript to extract all of the different groups. And after that, I'm going to extract the data of the link to that page. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Let's put a breakpoint right here and let's run this process. So the process is going to start with displaying a custom form. We're going to add the text right here. And inside of the picture, we are going to add any old picture doesn't really matter this is really not my taste in shirts these are ai generated shirts some examples anyways let's click on ok and follow this process so it has opened a new window it has gone to this tab and now it's going to scroll three times down so if we go to our power automate we can see that it's scrolling down and after that it is going to extract the data from the web page 
So what is it doing? It's extracting all of the different links that I am a member of. Now you can do your automation differently. You can start your automation from Excel, meaning that you can have a list of groups that you want to post to in an Excel workbook and then start your automation from that Excel loading those uh, items that are inside of the Excel. Just a few tips if you want to take that approach, which might be better. So here, uh, here is the data that was extracted. So I have extracted 160 links. This now forms a data table, data from Facebook, and then I'm going to loop on top of this data and repeat those actions of making the post. Now, if I wanted to change this, it would be extremely easy. Now, all I would have to do is search for the Excel action tab right here, launch a new Excel. Once I launch an Excel, I don't have Excel on my computer, so I cannot show you if th that it works. I would just select the document where I would have a list of different groups that I want to post to. And after that, I would read from Excel. So I would read something like this. I would select uh, automatically the instance that was created by opening the Excel file. And then I would read probably all available values from the worksheet if it was just in one column. So that would create a data table that I can use, data from Excel, that I can use to loop on top of this data right here and create a loop that is going to visit each one of those pages instead of extracting each one of those pages from this page right here on Facebook. So let's continue with our process. So we have explained pretty much the main core part of our process. So we're extracting all of the information. After that, we are starting a loop and we are looping on the data from Facebook. And after that, we are visiting the current item. What is the current item? The current item is currently the first line in this process. So this one, this one, this one. Every time we finish one of those for each loops, we're going to be completing one of these current items. So by using the current item, which is created automatically when we add a loop, so when we add this for each loop, we would have a current item that is created automatically. Now we have current item two. So we're going to use this current item to navigate to the next page. And after that, now comes a very interesting part. A reason that most processes fail, it is because you get a mismatch on the page that you're trying to post, meaning that uh, probably there is uh, the selector that you're trying to click on or the button. First time you try to create the automation, maybe it worked, but now it doesn't work anymore. This is because you are creating bad selectors. And Facebook does this on purpose, tries to make their selectors very hard to uh, automate because they don't want automation and bots like this to troll on their platforms. However, we are going to create a bot that is still going to troll on our platform, and I will show you how. Now, once we have uh, gone to the uh, web page, the next action is to click on a web page. Now, what is this action right here? If we go to the browser automation right here and we click on a link on a web page, we add this action right here, and I will show you exactly how we're going to create a good selector. We're going to add a new UI element and we are going to get this element or create a connection with this element right here. Now, it is important for you, pay attention to this, that you don't select the button or a div element. What we're trying to do is select the text. Why? Because these selectors are very complicated. They, don't, they have a dynamic ID every time the page opens, the ID and the class change. So the only way that we can uh, the best way that I have found to spy these elements right here is via this span or via this text right here because this text is unique on the page. So if we can get this text right here, it doesn't really matter if the elements on the page change. We're always going to be able to click on it. So let's click on it and see what happens. Now we have automatically created a new selector. Now let's click on save and go to our UI elements right here. This is this page is going to show you all of the different interactions that you have created with different browsers or applications. And we can see that this is the element that was just created for us. 
this was this is the default element and i can tell you already that if we run our automation it is not going to work because this id is dynamic and this probably div structure will change if the resolution changes therefore we can change our selector to make it a little bit more manageable so let's delete all of this and let's just leave span text and save our selector now this has made our selector much less likely to fail we can also test our selector and see if we are able to find it on the web page it has found it so it our selector is working so let's save this and this is how we would click on this action right here so what we are trying to do is we're trying to click right here and then upload a picture and then add some text right here so let's repeat these actions just with automation so we're going to click on that button that we have seen right there we're going to wait for five seconds after we have waited for five seconds we are going to send some keys so what are we doing exactly is we are clicking on this once we click on this we're going to be on this page right here right here we are going to add the path to our image so we're going to add this in case or we're going to add the path if the image is in a different folder and after that we're going to click on the open button or we can also hit enter it really depends on what you want to do the cursor is going to be automatically placed in here therefore the next action that we do is we can send keys and pay attention also to this in the send keys first we're uploading the image and we're using the custom form data and we're also using the upload picture id that we have created previously after that we are just hitting return and the same thing in the post description we are using the custom data from the form and we're using the id post description and after that we are clicking on publish post and that's pretty much it for our process another thing to notice is that this button right here can be different sometimes it can be written in your own language therefore it is important that you make sure that uh, the text is properly set up uh, and that you are not just using the code that i will provide you but that you make sure that it is properly set up also for your local language so change this text if in your local language on your pages the text is different in addition to this i have also added an action on error continue flow run and go to label this means that if this action fails for some reason we're just going to skip that page in case that page has blocked us or something and we're just going to go to the next page and try posting inside of the next page i hope that you have enjoyed this video this automation is really cool it has helped quite a few of you that have left me great comments in the previous three or four videos that i have created about this and now that it has been upgraded and improved and now that we can do so much more with this uh, Microsoft Power Automate Desktop, I'm really interested in how you guys want to, to improve this automation. Now that we have built this automation, I'm really curious to know how you guys want to improve this further. Can we add AI or how can we add AI into this posting to make it more unique, more provocative, more so that people will engage with it and that's the whole objective. Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching my channel. I hope to see you in the next video.